my friend. I hope you're having the most amazing week and you've had time to enjoy the outdoors. Today I'm going to be talking about the care of spider plants. They're one of the easiest plants to take care of and it was one of my earlier plants I purchased in my plant collection because of that reason. The one I'm holding here is called a spider plant bonnie and Bonnie has these gorgeous leaves that curl. So it's really cute, it reminds me of hair. And the other types I have is two other types. One that has a white um, area of the leaf, like a white stripe in the middle of the leaf. And the other ones are a reverse type where the actual white is on the edges of the leaf. And I find spider plants, they do like their bright indirect sunlight. And I have have helped a spider plant in low light and it didn't do very well. So I had to move it to bright indirect sunlight, which I find spider plants enjoy. They do also uh, can be okay in medium indirect sunlight as well. I wouldn't put a spider pack myself in a in direct sunlight because I find that uh, the leaves may burn, especially the white areas of the leaves. When it comes to temperature, Melbourne can get very cold and it can get, become very warm as well. I find spider plants like a temperature range between 10 uh, de Celsius degrees to about 30 Celsius degrees. So that's around about 50 Fahrenheit to about 80 Fahrenheit. If you find that you have spider plants and you grow in different temperatures, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section down below. I also find that with spider plants, they do like their water. So I don't um, pop a spider plant in a terracotta pot because then I'll be watering this plant, you know, pretty much every single day. So I pop my spider plants in a, a plastic nursery pot and I tend to water it once uh, a week in summer and then in winter, generally once every two weeks there. But that all depends on where you live and what you keep your household temperature at. And if it's area where it receives a lot of bright indirect sunlight or whether it's in a, lo a lower light situation. And if you do like this kind of content so far, please help your, help your planning girl out by subscribing to the channel and hitting the likes button. Truly appreciate your support in growing the channel so we can create a plant community together. When it comes to things like soil, I, I don't find that spider plants are fussy when it comes to soil. I generally just use like premium potting mix with a little bit of perlite in it. And I find they do very well in that situation. Uh, I don't add any extra, um, like any sort of extra thing into it. And when it comes to fertilizing, I tend to fertilize my spider plants often because they produce a lot of these little plantlets. So these are plantlets that grow on these little stems. And I find for the plant to grow a little, a lot of little plantlets, I fertilize generally almost every single time I water the plant. I probably, probably in summer, I probably do it once every two weeks and in winter once a month because I'm still finding my spider plants are still growing in winter. And with the fertilizing, these days I tend to use a liquid fertilizer. It's called uh, We The Wild. I'm not sponsored by We The Wild. I just happened to, my one of my girlfriends actually recommended it. And it's a worm-based uh, fertilizer. And I found that that's worked wonders with my plants. And I tend to use it at full strength at the recommendation. But if I was using like a commercial fertilizer, from say from big box store or from Bunnings or uh, or from Lowe's, I would um, dilute the solution to probably about a quarter of strength, especially if I'm watering, uh, well, if I'm fertilizing the plant often. And when it comes to things uh, like uh, repotting the plant, yes, I when I repot the plant, I tend to make sure that the plant is actually um, root bound before I repot my spider plant. I tend to go about two. Uh, pot size higher because I find spider plants really grow their roots very fast and I don't put it into like I mentioned before I don't put it into a terracotta or a glazed ceramic pot because otherwise I'm just going to be watering my plant all the time. When it comes to pests I think spider plants are really pest resistant because I've I have three spider plants and I haven't had any issues with any pests. So I haven't had the common pests of the aphids, the spider mites, or, or threats, or uh, mealybugs there. I haven't had, or fungus nests. I haven't had any of those issues. So I think spider plants are very 
pest resistant which is really good because these days I have too many plants in the household and I honestly I'm really over with pest control and when it comes to uh, things like what else humidity let's talk about humidity honestly I don't think spider plants care when it comes to humidity I don't use a humidifier near my spider plants that humidifier is more for my tropical plants it's in the area where it, um, there's not really draft. It's a pro. It's 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 in an area about two or oh, I'll say two meters away from that south facing window. I don't use trays or pebbles and water. So I think any household spider plants are quite content with it. And when it comes to propagation, the best thing about spider plants they're so easy to propagate. They have these little they grow these little plantlets on these stems. So these are baby plants and all you need to do really is to grab one of those plantlets and just pop it into soil and it will propagate. If you wanted to have more detail on how to propagate a spider plant I'll pop a link down below and a link above as well. And that's all I have for you guys today on the care of spider plants. If you have tips of your own I would love to read about it in the comments section down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll catch you all next time in the next video and you take care. Bye.